and welcome back I want to do a quick video put it together well probably not a quick video but I mean you understand I wanted to show you a little bit more of this um, battery tester again I'd like to thank uh, Andy uh, with our off-grid garage down in Australia I originally saw this particular tester in one of his videos and decided to pick one up uh, and the links will be in the description uh, to Andy's videos as to well as well as to uh, how to get one of these if you remember in the previous video, the display got cracked in shipment, which I have emailed them about and, and have inquired about getting a replacement display. Uh, but as we were talking about earlier, um, you'll, we were able to hook this up to a PC and we are able to successfully control this uh, without an issue. Uh, we do have one of our 280 amp hour cells that you see here hooked up and we did go through a charge cycle on this. Uh, we stopped this at... Uh, like I have with uh, our other packs that you see there. Uh, we stopped this at 3.5 volts. Now this one uh, is one of our test cells, uh, one of our four spare cells. If you remember when we bought our batteries, we ordered four extra cells. So the event something got damaged in shipment or if we needed a replacement cell, we had one readily available. But we will take this one up to 3.65 and then we'll do a discharge test. Uh, but just to show you here on the screen, and um, hopefully that's coming through okay. And I'll see about getting some recording software to make this a, a little bit easier to see the, uh, the printouts on the bottom. But we added about 165 amp hours uh, in to this cell. And charging time, as you can see there on the corner of the screen, was roughly about 5 hours and 35 minutes. And that was at 30 amps. So we charged at a 30 amp rate with a cutoff voltage of 3.5 volts. And we told the charger to cut off the current when the current dropped to about 2 amps. So we're going to take this up to 3.65. And I'll probably lower this to maybe about an amp. Maybe even half an amp. Not quite sure yet. Uh, and then we'll do a discharge test. But one thing I do love about this software is and if you've watched Andy's videos you'll know what I mean is that this information can be exported to a CSV file and then imported into an Excel or or another graph of, or another uh, um, program of your choice to kind of keep and analyze this data and what I love about it is that you can monitor this in real time uh, so as this battery charges you can kind of see the LiPo 4 the blue line here's your voltage the red lines are current. So on this sidebar, you'll see this, you'll see a 30 up here because we had it set for 30 amps. And this blue bar is our voltage. And you'll see we started right about 3.32, 3.33, came all the way up to three, about 3.35, leveled out, dropped off a little bit, and then became steady at that rate and then you'll see the line slowly, the voltage starts to increase, levels off again, increases a bit more, starts to level, another increase, and then you get this sharp rise right about five hours and 23 minutes, right about here, and all of a sudden, you see it start to peak up, it hits our 3.5 volts, and then you see the charging current drop. And then when it hit our two amps of charging current down here the charger cut out and you'll see it held at 3.5 like we asked it to and then you can see when the charge when the current cuts out if you look at our red line here follow it up to our blue you'll see that's when the voltage starts to come down so the charger's been cut off at this point and the voltage in the battery is starting to settle back down to its normal resting voltage that you can see here so you can dip again still settling still settling and right there right about there is kind of where it looks to be it's going to be settling out at and we'll just let it go a little bit longer and I've kind of stopped the monitor so this is nine eight hours and 53 minutes into it and you can see we settled down to about 3.42 volts. And what we can do is we can verify that with a meter. And 
And yes, I don't have my gloves on. I should, but I do not. We have a 3.406 volts versus 3.422 that the instrument is seeing. So just a just a little bit off, but you know, not enough at least for me to be concerned. But um, yeah, this actually is pretty neat. It works well as a charger. We'll do the discharge test and see how well it handles that. And uh, like I said, the bonus is you get some very nice uh, graphing software and you can watch and see all these charge curves and voltage curves that everyone talks about uh, that you always kind of see graphed. It's nice to be able to see it in real time. Because uh, one of the misconceptions of LiPo 4, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, is the voltage is not really an indication of state of charge. Now, as you're charging, you can kind of look at your voltage graph and, and see where you're at and your charging aspect of it, such as that, again, I'll come back to this peak. And this is about where the battery is starting to reach its top capacity, because you see that sharp spike up. Uh, but that's because it's under a charge and when it's under a discharge you'll will I'll bring you back for that and you'll kind of see more of the same when this battery will kind of plateau out as you're pulling charge out as it's under load I should say and then all of a sudden you'll you're gonna see a similar graph tomorrow when we bring you back where you're going along, going along, holding voltage, holding voltage, holding voltage, and all of a sudden it's just going to start to drop off and drop off pretty suddenly until it gets to that cutoff voltage. But if you disconnect your load and just let this battery sit there and rest, it will recover and come back up to its normal resting voltage. Even though this cell has no capacity left in it, if you take just a voltage reading, it's going to potentially have the same voltage reading or pretty close to the same voltage reading being no capacity versus full on capacity. Again, that's just kind of one of the characteristics of these cells that, so going strictly by a battery voltage is rather difficult to do. That's why your BMSs come in uh, and your uh, shunt monitors that can actually read how much power you've pulled out of the battery versus how much you put in, and it can kind of use that to help calculate that state of charge. But I've rambled on enough. Uh, we'll bring you back when we do the discharge test using that same unit there. And I'm gonna give you a little bit of a quick update on our battery supply here. Uh, as you can see, we've got our positive bus bar installed. We just covered it with some Capdom tape just as a kind of an extra layer of protection. And the reason why you're seeing all the alligator clips and before you freak out, uh, understand that the batteries were all charged individually to the same level. Positive bus bars were connected together. And then per what you saw me do in some previous videos, I will hook the two first two cells together through the meter to see what the current draw is. As long as the current draw is 100 milliamps or less, I'll leave it connected through the meter, like you're seeing here. Keep an eyeball on it. If it gets down to about 10, 10 or less milliamps, then what you saw me do here, I actually put a bus bar in that one. But what I'll do is I'll disconnect the meter, and you can say, kind of see what I've done here, where I just take one of these light gauge alligator clips, because again, I know just by using the meter that when I connect these two together, there's going to be very little to no uh, current flowing between the two because they, they're at that same level. So I'll replace the meter with an alligator clip you see here, and then I'll clip my meter between the next two and repeat that process. Once it drops to, a, again, a low level, disconnect the meter, put another alligator clip you see here between these two terminals, and then move my meter between this battery and the next battery to add. And I will we'll do that and work my way down the chain until I get to the final battery you see here. Or I should say cell. My apologies. These are cells. When they're interconnected, then, and then it's a battery. But you can see, kind of see the meter. Meter's got that last cell connected in the battery bank or in with the other cells to form our battery. You can see we're down to about 5 milliamps. 
a current that's being exchanged between this one we just added and the rest of the pack, uh, which tells me that these 16 cells are pretty much spot on with each other as far as being matched at the level that they're at. Again, I charge my cells to 3.5 uh, because that's how I will use them in the house system. Uh, these are not taking to 3.65, but that is being done deliberately and also in an, in an effort to help prolong their life. And that bank of battery cells, you'll see, will have the same treatment. Uh, we'll run a charger through them individually, one at a time, for one last go to get them up to snuff. So that way, as we're connecting our cells together, there's very little current being exchanged between the two. And we'll repeat that same process where we'll cook in, cook in the first two, watch the meter, let it drop to an acceptable level, hook in the next one, the next one, and the next one, and slowly build our way up to it. And it's also being done, at least in my mind, as a safety precaution, because when you think of the current capacity of just one cell, and then you factor in that you're putting 16 of these cells in parallel, you can see very quickly that if something were to happen where maybe you do have inadvertently or something shorts between your positive and your negative side, imagine what 16 of these cells in parallel, if they short, what they are capable of doing. So me adding one cell in at a time, slowly progressing my way up. Yes, it takes longer. Yes, it takes more of my time to do that. But again, it's just being a little bit more on the cautious side. Admittedly overly cautious, but again, you know, take your time, uh, keep track of what you're doing, keep things straight, keep things orderly, uh, and you'll be able to, uh, you'll have a better success or better chance, I should say, of uh, something not, of something potentially not going wrong here. And like I said, that's a, I do apologize because a little bit of rambling, you know, a little bit of preachiness there. But uh, again, my, my videos are not meant to be a how-to, nor should they be taken as, oh, you must do this versus you must do that. Uh, they're out there for being put out there for informational purposes only, kind of document how I've done things. Uh, and if you can gather useful information out of them, that's great. That's what they're there for. Even if it's to you look at the way I do something and maybe you look at it and say, oh, I would never do it that way. Well, the, even that in and of itself is uh, I find useful because eh, you looked at one of my videos and you learned how maybe you don't want to do something. It's just as beneficial as looking at one of my videos or anybody's video and learning, oh, now I understand that. Now I have an idea how I want to accomplish that same task. But that's enough rambling for now, and um, I'll bring you back uh, once we do this um, discharge test and let you know how it goes. Talk to you later. Bye.